Thanks for joining us. I'm Randall Bennett. There are rumors that we'll be seeing a larger screen version of Amazon's Kindle on Wednesday. Now, the Kindle, if you're not familiar, is the infamous ebook reader that's all wireless. It uses CDMA and EVDO and all those other acronyms to use wireless spectrum to get books from the internet to the device. And this new version that's being rumored is expected to be more akin to a newspaper reading experience, whereas the current Kindle is more like a novel. Is this going to change things, or is this going to kind of keep the status quo? Let's talk to two people who know what they're talking about. We bring in Jeff Bordeaux from GadgetReview.com. Jeff, thanks for being with us. Thank you. We also have John, Jonathan Strickland from HowStuffWorks.com. Jonathan, thanks for being with us as well. Thank you very much. So this new Kindle that's rumored, if you know, there's a big press conference, they're doing a Pace University in New York City. So it's basically a done deal at this point. A large screen Kindle is coming. Now to you, Jeff, does this make a big difference or do you think that this is more you know, a product looking for a market? Um, I think that it is. I think it'll be, um, I think it'll go off well. I think that, um, you know, despite, uh, you know, this current century sort of destroying everything that was made the last century, I think <laughs> that there's still going to be traditionalists that you don't want to hold things with two hands and you know have it have a more body to it so I think that it will um, that it will definitely be a, a step up from the current one which is sort of on the small side but um, yeah I think it'll it'll fit you know it'll fit with a, a notebook or in a backpack I think it'll do well for so sure. one of the things we're hearing this is of course still not gonna have color it's gonna be that e-ink display that's low power unless you're changing a page and all these different things Jonathan I mean is this bigger form factor alone something to make people who've maybe been holding back on ebooks look at it as a newspaper replacement? Um, I think it might be. Uh, CNET did an interesting story recently about uh, the average age of the Kindle user and they did a really informal sort of survey actually it's really more just a poll but it was interesting about out of the 700 people who responded 70 percent of them were of the age of 40 or older so we're talking about readers who have a lot of discretionary income, but they're also the more traditional readers, the people who would traditionally subscribe to a newspaper or magazine. Um, I think a lot of the younger folks are getting their information off the web through blogs and, and web pages and things like that. So uh, I think that this larger form factor actually has a built-in audience, and it happens to be the core Kindle audience. It's interesting. It's an interesting point. You know, today we heard Berkshire Hathaway, uh, CEO and chairman. Warren Buffett kind of say that, you know, if Gutenberg had invented the internet, there's no way newspapers would be around. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, like you say, those people who like to sit down with traditional newspapers, maybe they'll give this a shot. We'll have to see. Uh, one of the other news stories we're talking about today, Palm Pre is rumored to have a release date. It's rumored to be June 7th. Now this according to the Boy Genius Report and his inside ninjas, as he calls them. <laughs> uh, we're hearing that this pre might cost about $199. Uh, for people who are coming to Sprint for the first time and for people who have stuck around with Sprint with their you know, poor customer service and all those other things, you get fleece an extra hundred dollars to two ninety nine. I am one of those people as well. <laughs> so uh, obviously I'm a little bit frustrated because of the pricing, but you know, you can't really win them all. Jonathan, do you look at this pricing and release date as something that's going to help Palm out and help Sprint out? Um, I think the pricing is um I think, well, it's competitive. I mean, it's, it's right there with the iPhone. It's a little more expensive than the G1. Uh, and Sprint, unfortunately, up to this point, has been sort of um, lacking when it comes to really compelling smartphones. Uh, they have plenty of phones, but not a lot of the really feature-heavy phones that you see on other networks. So I think for existing Sprint users who have been dying to have a phone that rivals what other companies are carrying, uh, this is a big deal. And I think for people who haven't really settled yet, it might be a big deal. Um, the interesting thing to me is that the people I hear talking about the Palm Pre aren't consumers. It's other tech journalists. Yeah, nerds. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the tech journalists and the early adopters. They're the ones who really want to get hold of this. They've wanted it since CES. And uh, the, the, the constant delays have just sort of added to the mystery, uh, almost to the point now where people are wondering if it's even going to survive. I mean, I think I'm pretty, I mean, we all know that this is Palm's do or die thing. They have to yeah. really put this out. Um, you know, whether, I don't know, I'm excited about it. Jeff, what's your take? Are you, are you going to buy this phone? Do you know uh, someone who's going to buy this phone? I'm definitely not going to buy it. Um, <laughs> I will buy the new iPhone, whatever that is, whenever it comes out. But... I think um, I think it's a little too little too late. I mean, the iPhone has already left impressions with people for the last you know almost two years now, and I think that despite some of the good features um, you know on the pre, I think that um, I mean you'd have to just be like a diehard Sprint person or you know anti AT and T or whatever company that you don't like to jump on board. But um, 
I don't know. I like to sort of equate it to the um, the PS3 and the um, Xbox 60 and how that launched and how Xbox had a whole year on PS3. And I just think, um, you know, Apple's got something up their sleeve to combat um, what Palm's doing. It'll be interesting to see. Specifically with the price point, Jeff, do you think that two, that 199 price point, do you think that makes it more competitive than it might have been otherwise? I mean, despite, you know, you have to basically hate AT&T and hate Apple to really like this device. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think of the pricing? I think the price is going to be is fair given the structure of what's going on right now. Um, I think for you personally with the 299, I don't really understand <laughs> that as much. But um, yeah, I think that that's not going to um, you know um, make too many people hesitant at that price point. Yeah, it's I think it's pretty yeah. fair. It's pretty fair stuff. Jonathan, any last words, parting shots before we head? Um, well, I would say that uh, that this needs to not just be a home run for Palm. It really needs to be a home run for Sprint as well. Um, Sprint's been they had a really bad first quarter. Uh, they're really they they need a, a home run hit. And if Palm doesn't deliver, that's bad news for for both companies. It'll be interesting to see. I think you know Sprint's been devoid of good phones for uh, at least six months now. I think they haven't yeah. had a good device. And I'm stuck with the Motorola Q, so I'm not exactly uh, in the market for. I'm not exactly enjoying my Sprint experience. We'll see if you know they can stop some of that customer bleed. I think they've said 1.25 million people left Sprint. I don't know, whatever. Mm. Anyway, that, we're out of time, so we have to leave it there. Jeff Bordeaux from GadgetReview.com. Jeff, thanks for being with us. Thank also, you. Also, Jonathan Strickland from HowStuffWorks.com. Thank Great you. Great guest, you guys. Appreciate you being on the show. I'm Randall Bennett, yes. and this is the end of TechV, but you can always get us tomorrow, the next day, from iTunes, YouTube, and lots of other places. We'll see you next time on the show. Randall at TechV.com. Email me. See ya.